go. Recording begun. Welcome, everybody. It's good to see so many friends. Some of you I will see in just about two weeks, which is also going to be delightful. Uh, this probably has a little bit of excitement building around working on stats dashboards because we're heading to Europe, and that's an opportune time for us to talk together about further ideas that are there. Uh, to sort of set the stage just a bit, this is an initiative, the Stats Dashboard Initiative, as it's been called previously, um, that seeks to help look at data to identify some things in the WordPress project. I first remember speaking of this with Andrea in early 2020. At the time, I was a team rep, and we were looking at what would help the teams, and I looked at it from the lens of how and I were doing considerable administrative overhead, and both of us were not sponsored nor employed at that time in the project. Uh, so how do we give out the badges? How do we recognize all of the different types of contribution that are going on to this team and what data points would be helpful for us to have available? I know uh, Karim Marucci tells me that he had a conversation with Matt about this even almost a decade ago. So this idea has floated for some time. Uh, so it's time for us to make a little bit of progress with some of those things and ensure that we do so in a way that the community has a chance to say what data matters and what data maybe would benefit different areas of the project. Uh, to set the stage, the sustainability team has three pillars of contribution, and this is in the welcome box at the top of make.wordpress.org slash sustainability. The three pillars are social, finding ways to increase the diversity and well-being of the WordPress community. Environmental, reducing energy and waste consumption in the development and usage of the WordPress software and its community activities. And the third one, economical, finding ways to economically support contributions to the WordPress project for those who need it. So out of that, what we're about to work on is going to perhaps set the stage for two of those. Certainly the social sustainability. Do we have the amount of contributions that we need to sustain the initiatives that we've got in front of us. If we want to launch new initiatives, what do we need to think about in order to make sure that they are sustainable so that the project long-term is in a good spot for that? So out of that, uh, the kickoff for this Hangout, um, the announcement post identified four different areas or four different people groups that might want to, let me share that link again, um, that might want to benefit from having some of these types of stats and data. Those groups are, first and foremost, the teams. This was initially proposed as a way to benefit the teams. So uh, certainly we've requested team reps to be a part of this input, looking at it from the lens of what do individual teams in this project? How do we know, for instance, in core, that we've got the contributor base needed to sustain a release or maintenance release or... Um, over in the training team, looking at the amount of work that is being done and what needs to be done. And can we maintain keeping content current at release time, et cetera. So there's some a lens specifically from that of Teams. And that's, I think, going to be our primary driver. Matt has spoken about that in many of his state of the word and other times. I asked him questions at Europe last year about it. So I think that Approaching it first and foremost from that lens is really important, but also to recognize we have individual contributors. Some individual contributors right now are sponsored and some are not. I am an individual contributor representing also my employer um, at this time, but that was only within the last three days. Yesterday was my anniversary there. Woohoo! Uh, so I've only been able to contribute during company sponsored working hours in the last three years. But I've been in this project as a contributor since 2009, um, perhaps, uh, you know, at times stepping in and out a little bit more than others. But individual contributors have needs. Sometimes those needs for data would help them secure those that are seeking to be sponsored, um, secure some of that funding. I spoke with a contributor who has been sponsored by multiple organizations in the WordPress space, and she shared with me that. Uh, she uses the stats. I finally figured out who's using make.wordpress.org slash updates and the, the scope of how and why. This person manually tallies the work that any kind of data point metrics and has that information listed in the slash updates area. 
so that and I don't I don't need to reveal if she's not present the way in which she does this but to back up the contracts that she creates in agreement with those sponsoring her she uses this the data points that she has available and she does so manually so organizations that wish to sponsor others might want to know also, this is kind of our third pillar, uh, organizations wishing to sponsor might want to both ensure that the people that they are sponsoring are doing things. Also, wouldn't it be great if we say, here are the real needs in the project from the perspective of the teams and the teams can identify here is where we need the support. And so there is data available from that. I should also clarify as I think about this a little more, individual contributors that sponsor that are unsponsored, whether they are sponsored because they build sites for clients and they self-sponsor, or they are just solely hobbyists and they are not considering any sponsorship at all. And to that, I often think of our dear friend, Dr. Andy Fragan, who does this around being an operating room trauma surgeon. He's not in this to get sponsored. Uh, very valuable contributor, a long time to this project. So there are some that may or may not wish to be sponsored as well. And so we want to acknowledge that. And then finally, our WordPress project stakeholders. So to that, I think of folks like Angela, Josepha, Matt, that may want to have some data points available as well to ensure proper guidance of where this project is headed and think about the ramifications of various initiatives. So that's a little context stage setting. Let's dig into the data that we're already collecting. We're kind of off to the races and starting to look at some data. And I want to get to the point where I'm done talking and I open it up for all of you. So let me grab my screen and share with you. And every time I do this, I tell people, then if I look silly, but Zoom just hid all of your beautiful faces. And now I have to find which window it wanted to hide you behind and put you back. Because if I'm talking to you, I want to see you. I don't know why Zoom does this. I have three monitors, so maybe I'm confusing it. Uh, so do you all see um, my main screen with some stats dashboard kind of looking things there? Good. This is Paterja. Paterja is an open source based system, but it is a SaaS as well. So Paterja is integrating Grimori Lab and a few other open source projects such as open search and some things like that, putting it together in a SAS synthesized location. Disclaimer and thank you, Automatic. We are using a trial level account that can only hook up some a couple of sources right now. And that's a thousand dollars US per month for what we currently have. So if we would like to hook up more data points or other things, the cost will definitely change. If we would like to build out other integrations, again, the cost will change. So we're considering these things. We're not locked in. This is our first trial. We absolutely appreciate the work that goes into folks that make systems like this available because we know so many contributors are very busy about their contributing that to then put in the labor of building something ourselves when our primary focus is WordPress, well, Let's let's look at some tools that are out there. So Viterja pulls a couple of things together. Some of their systems are based off of the, the group Chaos, Community Health Analytics in open source software. That is a group that is part of the Linux Foundation. They are their own uh, open source project, the Chaos Group, and they make some amazing work in terms of metrics, looking at all sorts of things. And so they've thought through and worked with many other open source projects. Whether or not we adopt Viterja, there's a lot to learn from the chaos community, as well as some of the metrics they put forward. So what they have started with, Izada has done a lot of the work so far. Thank you so much in setting up these dashboards. Uh, you see that right now I have a time set. Uh, so that's cool. I see the little heart going up on my sharing screen instead of on the Zoom. That's fun. Um, I don't know if I've seen that before. Delightful. So we have just our GitHub account connected to this at this time. And right now it's set to show me everything in the last 10 years. If I wanted to say, show me some stuff within the last year, that too is good. There are, there's more data here than we practically could know what to do with. The One of the things that has really come up in this is the teams want to have team dashboards. So we would look at matching up their GitHub repos, their Slack, if we choose to go with this group, because you can hook up Slack 
you can hook up RSS. Uh, what it basically will not hook up that we would want to account for so far, help scout uh, WordPress revisions because our translator community and Glot Press um, and anyone that's editing something in a team handbook or on Learn's website, those are not synced back to GitHub. So tracking that type of information is a little challenging, we'll say. Uh, so we would want to maybe build in some integrations for WordPress revisions, not just RSS. It does take RSS. Uh, this does not yet take track, T-R-A-C, track. So that's our, if, if you're making a ticket related to meta fixing something on the .org websites, or if you are related to um, parts of WordPress that are not Gutenberg, you're logging a ticket in track. And so um, getting in comments and things like that would be pretty important. But we'll look at what we've got just with GitHub so far. If I look at just within the last year, I could see these folks have this number of commits. This goes back through the entire history of us using uh, GitHub, us being WordPress using GitHub at that time. So we can see lots of data that's there. Um, it also could in the future, so I'll just kind of navigate to a couple of these. You'll see that here we have GitHub issues. Uh, and in that area, you could see how many were open, how many people submitted them, et cetera, in the window of time that we have. You'll see that submitters by organization is displayed here. And behind the scenes, there's a little tool called Sorting Hat. Our Harry Potter fans might appreciate that giggle. Uh, so Azada has done a lot of the great work there that would match up somebody's GitHub user with their .org profile that lists uh, their employer according to their Five for the Future connections. Um, so we're, we're making the inroads for that. If we were to continue hooking up other things, their usernames across things like Meetup, their usernames across WordPress, their usernames across Slack, try to synthesize that and say, this is the same person producing this activity in these different places. We could combine that information to get a better holistic picture and better represent uh, the project. I mentioned Meetup. And um, at this time, Meetup's APIs, I believe, no longer are functional to use as it relates. <laughs> and, and Angela, I, I feel you. I feel you on that head shake. No, I have also, I immediately contacted Mike Artori, who is doing a lot of the work on Gather Press and us looking at our own WordPress spin on having a registration RSVP system. Our meetup organizers, whether official proper meetup or just WordPress people starting these monthly times together, often feel that simply a badge is a thank you, but perhaps not true representation of the amount of effort and labor that goes into the work that they do. Likewise, people that speak at these events in some parts of the world, uh, folks consider these to be professional learning opportunities if they attend. There's all kinds of data metrics that could be available. Um, if we if we decide to, as a project, leave Meetup, then, and perhaps Gather Press comes to us, uh, then again, the impetus on tracking WordPress revisions, who edited that meetup listing, who who was modifying a page on one of the WordCamp sites. That's all contribution, folks. And we know this, and we don't necessarily need to tally every detail, uh, but we could do better than we're doing if we had a little bit better tooling in place, right? So that's, that's some of the thoughts around that. So Angela, Mike did attend the first of these Hangouts and is aware of some of that. And I know that it's still in discussion. I caught up with them yesterday um, and we had a whole great conversation around that that whole topic. Yep, fantastic. Very good. So, so again, you can see that there is lots of data and this part is a login. So at this time, Hari, myself, Naoko, and Azara all have access to this data. Uh, we've had discussions about who can get the data. And when you're dealing with lots of data, you get into questions that data scientists are actually quite good at. Who should have access? How do we craft the stories we want to tell with the data? Uh, what do we keep private? What I am deliberately not showing on this at this moment is contributors in decline. That data is available. And I've shared in some of the other times that if I were to see that as a team rep and see which which individuals used to contribute a lot and are not now, I would interpret some of those things as, oh, is this 
let me see. Do I think that there's anything in the team, first and foremost, that might be a contention point that we should address? If I cannot find one of those things, I would reach out to the individual and say, hey, I see that uh, contributions are in decline. Are you doing okay? Not that I need their life story, but I would want to first and foremost think about them as a human and think, is it is there something going on and uh, any commitments that you may have to the project, would you like those to be reassigned? Or, you know, just get clear on communication and or any expectations of what they have volunteered for. Um, I wouldn't publicize that type of data, certainly. I have spoken with Paterja about some of this, and they are able to provide a version of this that the public can get to and see with, uh, and perhaps we look at what parts we want the public to get to and see, but they can hide it behind hash symbols so that everything is essentially anonymized in terms of the person, any of that, unless you've got passwords to properly log in. That's something to consider. Um, additionally, with that, uh, there is a version that I can give to all of you that demonstrates. So Baturja, the SaaS related company has available the information from the chaos community and open source Linux foundation project. Um, and they have done some work to set up some integrations. So I'm going to share the link of that one in the chat. So all of you can get to that. In fact, I think what I will do is give us a big pile of links. That way you've got them for later. Um, let's see here, copy some more links. That way you've got some of those. There you go. Here are other links I might refer to soon. So the uh, Baturja Analytics that you see on the screen now is not representing WordPress. This is representing a different open source project. This is specifically looking at how they've integrated Slack. Because we go to meetings in Slack, what I have learned is that threaded conversations in Slack won't work at this time. Also worth mentioning, uh, especially maybe Angela on this part, should we ever consider different tools? You know, they're integrating Slack. Matrix is an open source based project itself. It, it's one that we had considered replacing Slack with or integrating a bridge with. Um, if we decide to pursue some of that, then we need to think about uh, communicating the expectations with any tooling that we set up now with additional data points that we have and what we might do with that. Similar to what we're thinking through with Meetup, uh, it would just be one of those consideration points to bring up while we're evaluating our options as a project. So in this case, you could see that Elizabeth, who is uh, the community manager really of the chaos group, Elizabeth has sent this many messages and this many channels. And when Elizabeth began contributing or taking part in that, um, below you see Georg Link. Georg had about five minutes to join us on the very first of these Hangouts, which is great. Georg founded the Chaos Community, as well as is one of the staff members at Baturja. Um, has a lot of experience in a lot of open source projects and is one of the first open source people I met with a PhD. And then I met a bunch more all together last year at the uh, Open Source Summit run by the Linux Foundation in North America. Wow, some open source people have really figured out a lot of research. So uh, this is just one that you can look to if you want to experiment with the tool a little more and see what you can learn and discover from that. But there is a lot of data that could be made available. I'm always interested in thinking about the weird parts of this project where it's hard to track that work. Um, there are some people in our space, uh, and Kira, I hope you don't mind me sharing to this this one a little bit, but there are some folks who are primarily knowledge workers. And a lot of what the work looks like is to read, research, ensure that they look at historical reference points, things that frankly are just not going to be particularly able to be tied to metrics. Um, however, having some data to back up why they are, uh, they could continue to be sponsored. I don't know that that's true in Kira's case. Kira and I are coworkers. I think we know the value that Kira brings to our, our uh, employer that enables us to contribute. But also I think that there are folks that it would be really beneficial to have at least a little bit of data supporting the work that they've done. So as I started thinking about that in a couple of our other Hangouts, I was also inspired a little bit by the way Drupal does some of this. Now, again, I love learning from other open source we can take and choose what we take and choose. 
Um, and I also would love to talk with, especially Amy June's on my short list of people to follow up with. Some of us may know Amy June Heinlein. She has contributed to the DEIB work inside of WordPress related to Jill, but she is a mentor of mentors in the Drupal community, not an honorary title. Like she mentors the people that become mentors in the Drupal project. Um, so I want to find out a little more about from, from an insider about Drupal's contribution credit system. I don't think that that is a uh, great way for us to build everything, but I think for those people that are knowledge worker sorts, where we know that they they may need to track some data um, that tools can't otherwise offer us, the Drupal contribution credit system could be an option to be able to log some things in a way that becomes a little bit meaningful. Um, and Nora, I gather that you've got some Drupal background too. I recall that you were on one of the other Hangouts, at least for part of that time as well. So absolutely love to hear some of those insights too. Um, but that's that's a lot of what the tools are available, the initiatives, the why. And also I've been, this is the spreadsheet that I linked you to, became quickly out of date. Uh, because <laughs> it just does. A new repo in GitHub was created or something like that. What you'll find here is all of the teams or various initiatives, uh, BB Press, Buddy Press are included, all of that, um, that links to their team site, their handbooks, their Get Involved pages, their GitHub repos, and Core has the, the number of GitHub repos, uh, links to where their GitHub discussions take place, so they've got community forums tied to their GitHub repos about things. The Gutenberg one is busy. Uh, track SVN, if those apply. Uh, most teams, instead of using Trello, have moved over to using GitHub projects. I haven't quite logged all of those. Slack channels associated with that team. Um, accessibility has quite a few, but Core, I think, again, is going to take the cake on the number of Slack channels that they have. Uh, and then other questions came up with our translator community. So even assuming we could get lot press data and other things into that, uh, what we might not uh, have on our radar uh, quite yet enough is um, a lot of the other translator communities uh, start using a free Slack account, I mean, a free Slack workspace that is not part of .org proper. So connecting that many more Slacks to things might be a bit of a challenge as well. Um, so just thoughts that are out there, things that I'm thinking through. And right now we're we're open for a comment conversation. You know, what kind of data would help those of you that are present? What kind of things are you seeing that may or may not work? After that, we'll synthesize all of the thoughts people have had. Uh, I'm going to spend my contributor day time at Europe, directly engaging with various team tables, uh, getting some of that insight. I've also spoken with Joost um uh, as well and, uh, He's starting to chew on some of this type of information, just having a background of sponsoring many to work in the project, both as at Yoast, the company, his experiences at Newfold and his experiences now. And also I took it to Kareem, Kareem Marucci and I uh, have a catch up uh, before he leaves for Europe, I'll say that. And he is the main point of contact I reach out to with information I want to get to scale consortium folks. So the enterprise agency people have also wildly different needs because their end customers um, may want to know the sustainability of choosing WordPress, the software based upon is the project as a whole going to be healthy for locking in and choosing it for 10 years. So let me open it up for some discussion, conversation, and maybe we'll go with a show of hands since we've got a slightly bigger crowd today. Um, go ahead, raise your hand if you want to join in, if you've got some thoughts to share. And let me kick my dog out of my office while I do that. <laughs> Nora, Nora, go for it. Hi, um, sorry, I, I was having trouble with my buttons. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I just wonder, and I, I don't know if you wanted to have me do, share my video, but it says I can't anyway. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, you, you may totally share if you would like. Oh, it says you can't start because you have the host has stopped it. So I don't know if you wanted to turn uh, that on. Yeah. Let's go in. There is a way to do a make <laughs> co-host. This is okay. the part of the trade-offs for those that are, I have to give out co-host. I use the zoom webinar feature. So you all get a calendar invite RSVP thing. 
Um, but we have to basically bump everyone to co-host. But truly, I think I've met everybody that's here. Yeah, it's Most okay. of you in person. I don't so care if they're all... you know, it's up to you. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say that um, on the concern of uh, of of having metrics visible to what I think you mean is the public uh, versus mm. internal teams um, and having, you know, enough information that's displayed publicly to be valuable uh, as part of a person's profile, let's say. Right. Mm. Um, it, you know, I, I and and specifically on the point of like declining participation and concerns around that. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that I do like the way that GitHub um, does that reporting with uh, just dots and sort of vague representations of yeah. participation over a period of time um, versus, you know, immediately, you know, blatantly showing some sort of line chart or something to that effect as, as far as how you know, how many or counts or, or things like that. So, uh, so I don't know if bit, uh, if what was this called again, Biturgia, mm -hmm. um, has any options around how those charts are formatted. Um, or Actually, if that's... yeah, good question that to also share, if there are any charts that Biturgia cannot do, York has uh, shared with me that, uh, there are lots of APIs that we could use open search, which makes the graphs that you see here, uh, we could take the data to open search as well. So we can extend those, the the way that we, if we're not satisfied and it's too much of an edge case for Paterja to take on, they could also extend that data. We could develop how we want that displayed. Well, that's good to hear. Um, and in that case, and just in generally, you know, just to ask the question, uh, of course there's embedding of some kind that's kind of out of the box with Paterja, is that right? Yes, there is. Uh, but however, even if we embed it currently, I, I had we had experimented, those of us that have been working on this a little bit so far, we have experimented with embedding some of these directly into WordPress posts and things, and it kept prompting us for a login to be able to see it. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So very Bye. secure in, in those regards. Go ahead, Angela. As I understand it, there would need to be some custom work done in order to to do that. Is that that's what I understood? Is that right? Uh, that yes. So I don't know how extensive that work would have to necessarily be. I mean, we see chaos is is wide open public. Um, the idea of of sticking things behind hash marks. So I think one of the things I would like to do over the next few weeks maybe slightly past Europe, even timeline-wise being reasonable, uh, I value sleep, uh, is to kind of come up with a list of questions of how we are evaluating various software. Looking at, if we're looking at tools that are already created versus developing it ourselves, what questions do we have of the tool, age of that tool? I've seen, uh, for instance, Orbit is one that I was familiar with before. Their equivalent to Sorting Hat is beautiful. It has some AI technology that sort of figures some of that out. However, it was acquired by Postman, which is an API tool specifically that a lot of people have used. And Postman was recently in the news for having API secret keys being stored in the cloud. And that grew concerning. So Orbit is also now being shuttered. So looking at the health and longevity of some of the tools that we consider, and also the cost differences between what we need to have added versus the potential ask of the community, both those sponsored and those unsponsored, how much are we asking of people to build us a tool? Yeah, <laughs> all fair questions, but I think having a good solid list of that in our decision-making process and make that pretty public would be helpful. And also I, I maybe have one more question. I'm sorry, did you have another no, question? No, go for it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there was kind of a discussion around focus on teams. Um, mm -hmm. and I just wonder how, how have you gauged the interest on the focus on the project level versus, or, or the, the, uh, I would say the, uh, module level in this and plugin level, excuse me, I'm from the Drupal side. So I, <laughs> <take it. laughs> 
Bring so, it, Nora. Uh, I want to learn everything that went well in Drupal <laughs> and what you are like that should be changed. <laughs> yeah, I, I just wonder, um, is there interest within the community to have metrics on the plugin level? Um, could you elaborate a little bit more for us? Sure. So something that when you go to the um, the the to look at the list of plugins available for WordPress on the public website um, or internally through the the tool that you're installing a plugin, you know, could mm -hmm. there be you know some um, metrics displayed on utilization of that particular plugin uh, that you know more so than we already have available uh, yeah. that may may be valuable to um, to include in, as part of the scope of this. I just don't know if that's really part of the scope. That's my question. Yeah, at this time, I don't know that the tools necessarily cover that. And also, um, I want to say it's about two years ago, might be pushing a little longer. There were some historical data points that were being made available. That's actually kind of a good point to bring up. The data points that we had for plugins in the past of, I for, I don't, I think it was like install count something to that effect, the install count of plugins that got deprecated because, um, and that was something that JJJ was involved with uh, and might've been Scott, uh, I'm not positive, but the data was considered to not be valid. <laughs> uh, there were problems with the data and we had built that that ourselves. So that's a good use case to consider is we have built the ability for that data point to be actually useful ourselves. And um, the data was later found to be inaccurate, wildly so. And so it was just removed from plugin, specific plugin listings about the install count. So that does beg the question for us about should we build our own stats, given that our other times of building stats have been with mixed results and ensuring that we've got quality data is going to be really important. I don't know that the tools that were- From a contributor were... angle, I will, I, will, I will add that I think from a contributor angle that um, it has been valuable on the Drupal side to see mm -hmm. things like when you're going to install a plugin and making a decision about which plugin to uh, install, mm -hmm. um, a lot of times the um, it, it's good to be informed about like how active the contributors are around that particular plugin, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. I know this is a completely different, you know, way that things are <laughs> kind of done, you know, on the product. Yeah. I've, I've worked with WordPress for many years too, I'll be honest. Uh, but I, you know, I think that, um, I, I wonder if that's something that um, could be exposed and would be valuable to um, the community as a whole is just, um, you know, anybody that's, that's sort of on the consumer side Look, making decisions, business owners for their websites. Yeah, I think a lot of people forget that sometimes that uh, the plugins themselves are their own mini open source project within the broader WordPress project. So a lot of plugins, plugins especially that um, there are plugins that are freemium models where they have a, an organization behind them. Uh, my employer has Coblox and we've got a really high user count on Coblox and we have some staff that do work to maintain that plugin. I've also worked at the events calendar, similar situation. Um, but then miscellaneous contributors that use this thing are like, I'm going to do a pull request to help fix a thing or plugins like pods that are entirely operated as an, as its own open source project, no commercial entity there. Um, that's, that's definitely something interesting to consider. I'm not sure that that would be our, uh, like one of the initial decision-making things, but I think it's something worth exploring on the contributing to the plugin or the theme side of it for sure. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Good. Good thoughts. This is why I love these types of things. Bob Dunn, give us that radio voice, please. <laughs> Somebody was asking me that earlier about my voice. I went into a meeting just on the side note, trying to figure out our taxes in Portugal here. And one of them was a U.S. tax lawyer that is Portuguese. And the first thing he said oh. to me, he said, oh my God, your voice. Are you married? Do you have all the babes coming at you? You know, it was, this is a lawyer, you know, I'm just Oh, like, introduce him to Judy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, strange enough. But the, the one thing, I'll make it quick. The, the one thing I think this would be interesting data for, and I'm not sure 
how or what data that would be, but it's that the the companies that are trying to get into this space, I talk to them a lot, and they are looking for a lot of it, it's, it's more or less data that you can use to back up that hey, things are happening here. There mm -hmm. is, I, or even some of the newer ones that come to me and they'll say, you know, we understand there's contributors that need help, you know, but we don't know where to start with that. I mean. They're getting some of that information, but there is a lot of companies entering this space and trying to understand open source, understand the WordPress ecosystem. And I, I know myself and a few others have tried to educate the best we can. Mm -hmm. and often they get in there, you know, I'd say the majority get in there and they come back, you know, several months later, maybe gone to some WordCamps and stuff and they really love it and they love what they see. And some of them say, I wish I would have maybe known something earlier. So anyway, it's just, it's not mm -hmm. maybe a, a priority audience, but it is an audience that there might be information somewhere in there that could be pulled out to help them understand it better and maybe even yeah. convince them that, yes, this is a good move for them. Yeah, there's a good bit of this that could overlap with Five for the Future work. Um, so it's it's a delight to be able to work with Hari Naoko Azara on both this initiative and some of where that's going. Uh, and again, as we're learning from how other open source does this perhaps more or less adequately, um, I think about also looking at how other projects get their messaging out about their contributor needs. And I've spoken with people also in enterprise agencies. Uh, Sean, hmm, I met Sean at WordCamp Europe in 2022, Portugal. Um, and Sean is at American Eagle, drawing a blank on his last name right now. But in between holidays, their agency team has a lull and they can swing through and do one of their versions of a sprint, which means we got a couple of weeks that we're going to ship a thing. What in the project maybe needs done while we're in this weird holiday lull? And so could we pivot for a set chunk of time, come in as a team, do the thing and then go back when we know that our schedule has altered. And so having some of that data available from a team's perspective, a team rep saying, we would love to have this thing built and done and how it would benefit the team. That would be, I think, super interesting also in that pairing. And I think about that too, uh, with some of the companies that you speak with related to do the woo type of things. I know Bob gets solicited a lot from people wanting to break into the space, um, and which is great. Um, but I love the education value that Bob brings to helping them know the nuances of the project. And I think solidifying some of our five for the future messaging and looking at how other places would do something similar would be great to continue positioning things for them as they're wandering in, which is good. Thank you, Bob. Miriam, Miriam, if you do not know, I think most of you might, Miriam represents both uh, oh, Stratic, formerly of Stratic and now Elementor. And so WordPress hosting and or one of the largest user bases in the WordPress project with the with the Elementor theme. Right. And plugin. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, they the go theme, together. The theme uh, might be on people's minds because if you saw what happened in the last few days with the theme kind of just not being available. Working. I happened to working. facilitate Meta Teams meeting yesterday and I yes, saw. that was, um, yeah. Thank you for... <laughs> bringing that up. Yes, that was, yep. um, it was stressful feeling so helpless, but uh, thanks yeah. to the creativity of, um, I just know his username, K-A-F-L-E-G. Uh, he's the mm -hmm. team He was like, just try this. You know, it's the old uh, unplug reboot thing. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> so thank Good. goodness. But Good. um, yeah, so uh, I'm going to be asking, like, I'm going to be saying things that uh, show that I don't know much. Okay. So, and I like some things totally are clear. fine. Okay. <laughs> So <laughs> I, I'm, my assumption is that this conversation is about, uh, well, the sustainability of WordPress, which means like, how can we keep it strong and healthy going forward? Right? Yes. So, yes. so what does that mean? So there's like a number of different audiences and angles to that. So first of all, let's say there's the overall health of the project that the key stakeholders would want to be able to keep an eye on to see if it's getting the contribution that it needs. Mm -hmm. That seems to be what you were showing. Um, you know, I know, I understand we saw a limited, uh, versions of, of yeah. the data is available, but that seems to be what you were showing. And that's super 
critical, right? Like if the key stakeholders know that a certain aspect of the project needs attention and they can see some kind of decline or it's not getting attention it needs, then they can highlight that and say, okay, what can we do to mobilize that? Yeah. Also good for uh, companies that want to contribute because um, I spoke to some of you when I was trying to figure out how Elementor would start contributing. It was like, uh, it was not the easiest thing to navigate. Um, and uh, I, I said that like, we would want to, contributed in places that it's most impactful and there's a need and it was hard to figure that out. So that kind of data could help with that. And then that could be like aligned with the companies that want to contribute or organizations or whoever. So, so there's that, that's my thing. Yeah. Then there's the contributors themselves, right. Who maybe also that can be helpful to them. Maybe they also want a way to track how productive they're being. And so then they can get that data. Yeah. Um, and that, that is useful. Um, you mentioned enterprise. And so that's a whole other thing, which is like, how do we sell WordPress in general, which I think is a major uh, point that we need to be addressing in general. Yeah. Um, and this, this type of data maybe can help with that. But I would say that I feel like from that perspective, we have good data, which is show people how many releases WordPress has for a piece of software, regardless if it's open source or not, there's a lot of releases, they're high quality, it's a lot of contributors. So I think maybe we just need to package that in a way that makes it more digestible for like uh, the people who are, you know, considering WordPress, but I yeah. feel like that's more or less covered. Okay. But now I'm going to get to my Elementor hat, which is <laughs> companies that contribute products to the repositories and don't have insight. Why does that matter to contributors and not just big ones, but also small ones. I'm going to first talk to the smaller contributor. If I'm creating a product and um, I, I'm not selling it, so I can't see if it's successful or bringing value through sales, how can I yeah. see if it's successful? I'm, and I don't have, um, I have almost no insights. And so that's not motivating. If we want to encourage more people to be coming in from plugin number 55,000, right? From the bottom, they, in the end, creators mostly need something that validates what they're doing, some kind of feedback loop something mm -hmm. that shows that people are interested in it and adopting it. And right now there's not much of that mm -hmm. or almost none. I do also want to say that it's confusing to me that on the one hand, we say that there isn't good data around plugins, but we do have the install that like flat number, right? Like now it's 10 million for a yeah. lot of some plugins, which is great. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> More accurately reflects, reflects what's going on, which by the way, in my opinion, shows the strength of WordPress when someone comes to the repository and sees uh, plugins that are being used by over 10 million users, that says something. And I think that's yeah. good for everyone to get people yeah. in. But so there does seem to be that data and yet, and we're, we're reflecting it, but that's it. So do we, or don't we? So from uh, the perspective of a creator, I think we would want to See, and I know I'm like just rehashing like conversation that I feel like happens all the time. Everyone's just going in circles, but I will say it because we're here about sustainability. We would like to see, uh, let's say, okay, overall installs, but installs per version. Why, like for every version, why? Mm -hmm. Because was that a good version? Did people mm -hmm. want it? Were they installing it? Um, you know, and like that that is a sign of health and a feedback loop that we can use to make better versions, which makes a better plugin, which makes better experience for people, hopefully you know, right. In. Um, so that's just some of my thoughts um, and feedback about that. And I just, I'll just share one more thing. So I've tracked data through my various positions. Um, and one tool that we use that was very inexpensive and really easy to use and like almost like builder block, like getting data in front of us that we wanted. By the way, what you said about data needing to tell a story is totally true, right? Like what the why behind the data, what is it here for? What what is the story telling us? And then what's the actionable next step that be, can be taken from it? And I feel like that's like not so clear here in general, but um, Zoho Analytics, I'm just putting that out there so you know about it. Yeah. It's such a great tool. Like we all loved it and it really yeah. gave us a lot of insight. So uh, I know it's not enterprise. Maybe it's like not so well known, whatever. So people might be hesitant to use it for such a big project, but I'm just saying it was really good. So that, that's yeah. it. Those, that's what I have to say. Yeah, very fair. That's one that I hadn't heard of to consider. Oh, it's, it's the name of it again? Zoho, Zoho? Zoho Analytics. Zoho? It's really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool. Joaquin had popped in uh, to, I think, hang out to yesterday and had also suggested Google's Looker. And there are some pros and cons to that. I think of uh, how interesting or complex it's been for people to navigate Google Analytics transitions. So I don't know too much about Google's Looker program, but 
there are thoughts. And Yost is probably going to consider and chew on some of that too. Uh, he gets to work on some of those kind of initiatives. So that's pretty cool. Carolina, I see your hand. I don't know if Harry's wanted to say something, Harry, because you raised your hand before me and then you took took it down. No, go for it, Carolina. <laughs> but I think I'm I'm mainly seconding what other people have already said. So as a sponsored contributor, of course, I want public data mm -hmm. to show to the person who's paying me, <laughs> maybe not individually what impact I've made, but for every paid sponsored contributor and mm -hmm. every contributor who's hopefully, you know, wishing to be sponsored by a larger company or, yeah. as you know, I may be having a, a GitHub that people can sponsor individually. Um, so that's important. But also as a contributor, of course, I need data that helps me weigh one task against the other. So, because I need to be able to decide for maybe six months ahead, what am I going to focus on? Should I be working on Gutenberg? Well, I'm actually, sometimes maybe I, it takes me too long to get something done in Gutenberg. Maybe I should be, uh, contributing to documentation or maybe I should you know be running a local meetup and I need to be able to see where am I most needed and I today this is very difficult to do and I don't know how how we could how we would be able to present that for yeah. this type of data yeah. I don't know how it works in other organizations but I know at the at the beginning of the calendar year I set out my goals for the year ahead. Thankfully, I can write them a little generally. And my manager, which many of you know, Adam, is an amazing human being and is entirely understanding of navigating this. But once I start getting many layers up in the system, it becomes a little bit less clear. And my goals are available to anyone that is more senior than myself in my reporting line. And when they are evaluating, you know, we had layoffs a year ago, right at WordCamp Asia a year ago. And when they're evaluating why to continue or not continue, I think about these things as well. You know, I, I put down stats dashboard related work. I, I worded it um, something to the effect of working on an initiative to get better data decision making about how we sponsor and contribute. Um, I get to work with Kira on advocating for sponsorships in internally and so those those are some really interesting and valid concerns for sure ones that i myself have especially whenever later they may ask well you said you were going to work on this and then in the end it got squashed or i think about web p at the 11th hour here is the company that put in all of this talent uh and only right at release did they find out that the many months of labor that were just contributed, that that initiative didn't go forward. And it would have been a lot better to know that broad sweeping, it wasn't going to go forward uh, before they put all of that in. Yeah. Hard things to sort through. Yeah. And I, I don't want to get into any of the, too much of the details there, but I'm just thinking from a, from that similar perspective of how do we justify to our employers for those that have that concern <laughs> yeah well i mean having numbers that shows where i mean how many open issues do we have that doesn't actually tell us is this issue more important than the other part of wordpress that maybe mm -hmm. has three issues but no people working on it sure. and that's that's really difficult decisions to make yeah. i was gonna add um I know that like this conversation around dashboards has been uh, present for, for a long time. And I think Courtney, you probably will remember where this is. Um, I think Ian Dunn had started a conversation about dashboards at one point or another, and it really focused on this question of how do we surface, um, how, how do we surface the work that needs to be done and is going yep. to like help be the most impactful. And it was a really long and good conversation and your comments there, Carolina, just now just reminded me to go and revisit that because I think a lot of yeah. that is really relevant to this uh, conversation. I'm going to go dig that up, but yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, it, I know where that one is. I couldn't I, remember, it must be on project or something. 
Uh, no, I think it's in, I don't think it's in, pro I, I'll it. have for you in less than a minute. Let's let Izada speak to us <laughs> while I go looking. I, I just shared it in the updates. Oh, in the Hari chat. beat us Thank all. You. Oh, Hari. I had linked to it in some of the kickoffs for the sustainability team working on this. Thank you. Izada. Hi. Thanks, Hari. I was doing exactly the same and every time you are faster than me, I need to improve this. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, I am. I wanted to share something that occurred me, Ari, sorry, you've heard me saying this thing 20 times, but I We hang out a lot in it. this week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I believe it's important for me at least to repeat it at every conversation. Um, I see that like in the whole ecosystem, each party has different needs and will need to see different types of information. I personally don't think that we can have one solution that fits everybody needs and if uh, and many of us also have different roles so uh, when i speak as a team rep i would love to have a dashboard for the community team showing where we need more help in terms of tasks to complete uh, effort to to allocate because now there are se several different type of tasks stored in different uh, uh, in different spaces and it's we always have someone who jumps in the channel and say hey we have this queue we have this backlog who can help I believe that having as a team rep uh, it would be useful for me to have a clear way where all the community team contributors can see where the help is needed and that they can jump and do it on the other hand uh, five for the future uh, five for the future part um i do think that it would be super super useful for organization have a bigger overview not that granular in terms of task but an overview of what are the bigger projects that um that need more support more sponsor support and also what are the projects that better aligns with the like with the values, with the mission of the different organizations that are involved. What I'm personally, I don't think that this is a necess necessarily a responsibility of each one of us, like a, as a community, uh, when it comes to the internal reporting for sponsor contributors. I mean, I believe that it it would be great if this could help, but I wouldn't expect each one of you create something to help me showing Angela what I'm doing inside automatic, let's say. So, and also I believe that we can have different different types of, of way to organize our work. And also talking with other five for the future um, companies, it, it, seems to me that every organization wants to see different things or they are interested in in specific contribution types so probably we can like i'm not sure if go into direction but we can have a solution that can help each sponsor contributors show what they're doing to to their employers um but i am pretty sure that we can have one solution for teams and then one solution for organization uh, mm -hmm. or maybe many more but definitely i wouldn't i wouldn't have i wouldn't try to have one solution for everyone needs so yeah. okay yeah. i've repeated it again <laughs> so <laughs> i'll do a... it again in, in next weeks but yeah. thanks good yeah, when Zara and I were speaking of this during the uh, hangout in my yesterday morning time zone, um, we were thinking, I kind of had the brainstorm of what if some of the things that we don't want super public, but do want the companies to know, what if we tuck that into their five listing? Uh, you know, they have to log in to maintain their five page. Maybe there could be some data that they could see when they log in there or the same thing for individuals. Um, Birgit was expressing DEIB work concerns about not wanting to publicize certain bits of, of data tracking in, um, you know, that it, there are some bits that we want to ensure that we have diversity going on, but we don't need to publicize some of that data for sure. That would just be a privacy concern. I will say that um, Remore Lab as a tool 
is under Linux Foundation uses Insights. Linux Insights is the name of theirs. They have basically brought Grimoire Lab in and built off of that. Um, but I like the idea of, of how there are APIs and those APIs could be available in unique ways that we could extend beyond this too. And again, not looked in at any one tool, but just looking at what's out there and what others have been using um, and seeing what we could do with some of that data. So ideas there. Thank you, Carolina. If folks need to drop, that's okay, but I am here as long as we need to be here, which is also fine. Estella, Estella Rueda, I would love to hear uh, all of the thoughts that you have, but please inform me as well about any of the, um, any of your thoughts about tracking any of the work that happens for translation locales, because my goodness, if ever there is someone that is familiar with where the work happens, you would know. Okay, yes. Uh Right now, I am working with the Spanish team only, and I will go and organize other teams to make sure that, you know, everything is being tracked properly. Yeah. Um, we created the handbook for Spain in GitHub, mm -hmm. and we created as, you know, as a project in there, which is called Help Hub. Uh -huh. And we're every single translation is a ticket or a PR, and then that's where we are tracking everything. Right now, we're doing it that way for two reasons. One, uh, GlotPress is not ready for us to upload all the um, translations up from, yeah. you know, through GlotPress. And two, uh, we don't have a landing page for the documentation and mm. locals. So that's, you know, that's what that, that was a ticket I was trying to get Kelly <laughs> to respond to me last night. <laughs> In meta, yeah. Meeting. Yeah, in meta, yes. So I'm going to start answering, uh, you know, giving all these questions, to, on the, uh, posting all my questions on the ticket so that, mm -hmm. that I can start talking to Kelly and we can start finding the scope and all of that. That's uh, wonderful. So, but yes, the translations are being tracked in GitHub. So I think that okay. would be helpful. Yeah. That would be great. Uh, you know, it helps us track and give, a, you know, uh, the rec recognition to everybody who is working on what. Um, mm. So that, that's on that side. On the other, I had another question and it came to me up, you know, what, what um, everybody was saying regarding um, people that do not want to participate or, and then I have people that want to, that are uh, participating too much without really participating. Uh, um, yeah. yeah. And, and, that I mean, if, the if, question if or this, concern about badge hunters has been brought up before as well. That's, Somebody not, they... that's <laughs> not my, yeah, that's one, that's one Similar concern, but different. Right. Yeah. yeah. Similar but different. <laughs> uh, for instance, I can look into the design page, uh, the design team page, and they have 289 people that have pledged to work on the design team. Yeah. If you look into that and you just start <laughs> scrolling, uh, I can tell you, I know about 10 of those people. Yes. As probably a former 20 training... of them, probably 20 of them are really working on the design team. And then yeah. what surprises me even more is the unrealistic expectations of these people, you know, and, and this is what I think that really affects and gives the, the validity and the value to the project. They are, they are, uh, no, these are, they are volunteering to contribute 55 hours per week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw someone yeah, once uh, with, with like 100 hours a week. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> Isada and I were discussing this one, I think also at another point. And as a training team rep, when I was the training team rep, there were 2000 mm -hmm. people signed up. Where are these people? One of the thoughts that I had documented was, uh, you know, in our efforts of cleaning up, there was some effort to cut down on some of that spam of people that have volunteered for the things. I don't want to be super stringent. However, I do also want the ability that if they sign up and say that they are contributing to the team in such and such way, I want to be able to ping them with the notifications. You signed up to be one of the uh, reviewers before we publish, maybe proofreaders for the content. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's what needs to be proofread. You don't have to come to meetings all the time, but like if you know the standards of proofreading the thing, let us ping you when that thing is ready to be proofread. Right now, they're just pledging and it looks great, but it's spam. 
Yes, it is. It is. So <laughs> that it's always been a concern of mine. It's like, yeah. it's, it's possible that we can clean this up because yeah. I don't know, to me, it takes away from the project. It really yeah. takes away because then, I, and, and that goes, that, that also reflects on, on Five for the Future. We know when, mm-hmm. when uh, sponsors start coming over to and say like, why would you need, you have like 2000 people already there. Why would you want somebody else to, you know, some yeah. new contributors? Right. And that's not a reality. Yes, I I completely agree with that. Those are not metrics that would be useful when deciding where to fund contribution efforts or where to get involved. Mm-hmm. No, but, I, but no, <laughs> I probably not. But I'm I'm just cleaning up the spot, yeah. like you call them. Just cleaning that up, and that's the biggest concern of mine. Absolutely. And that's something I've always wanted. <laughs> I I tried to, you know, contact some people when I was a team rep in design and uh, and I tried to ask them, you know, like what, you know, some people try, but I never got answers yeah. because I don't have access to, you know, to that back part that I can just like delete, delete, delete. I'll be happy to do that. Right. Yeah. So uh, Nora mentions how in other open source projects, they have de- definitions of active and inactive contributors. Uh, yes. And they also have in, in other open source projects, they have, we have a very loose working title about, um, what's it called? Like a, somebody Task that is, contributors? yeah. And I also think about the, the honorary titles, right? So we have yes. core leads and that's now more of an honorary title. We don't see many of the core leads actually contributing to the project at this time. Um, and and I think those that have been team reps also can have some honorary titles as well uh, for their time with those teams. And if they choose to reactivate, that's great. We have never set a hard rule in WordPress about that type of a metric. I'm not mm-hmm. advocating yet at this time if we should, because I can handle one initiative in my brain power. <laughs> no, I know. I get del- it. You know, yeah. yeah. Yep. That starts yeah, delving but, but into I, some other areas, yes. but yes. Yeah, yeah, but I think that active contributors, inactive contributors, it should be a a goal for this too, or something that we can track. Yeah, I shared a link to a uh, Chaos Community's yeah. wording around that for mm-hmm. anyone that catches this replay and or recording. Um, but it's an example that again, Chaos Community exists to help create some definitions to things like this. And also uh, is a good resource for when we want to go see how that's implemented in other projects. I think we can find some resources there. Yeah. And yes, Harry, we do need to rationalize this. <laughs> <laughs> Harry also is their uh, perception that WordPress just gets built. The dashboards could really surface that the contributors are actually building it and having all this data about, I will let you speak instead of reading your words, please, sir. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I don't have a lot of things to add. In addition yeah. to what I shared, but uh, the point I was trying to make is, uh, like many folks think WordPress is. I mean, we just keep re- we just see releases out there, and they, they don't see uh, all this invisible work being done yeah. for open source. And um, I mean, I've been in three of these calls. I missed one of them. I wanted to attend the one this morning, but that was too early for me. But yeah. uh, <laughs> one clear feedback that I'm seeing is on how the dashboards that we built can help our contributors. So it can be organizations, it can be self-sponsored folks. So uh, like surfacing their contributions out there and like uh, portraying their impact, I think mm-hmm. that goes a long way uh, for a lot for for a lot of re- re- reasons and for a lot of use cases as well. And then the uh, the point that I mentioned in the chat, uh, I, I I think a lot about sponsorship, contributor sponsorship, is like we can we can show that hey, these are volunteers who are doing this in their free time and they are making so much impact. Mm-hmm. in their volunteer work so we need to support them more so that that was the point of view that i was thinking of. but and and to the other point Esther, our pledges definitely need some rationalization especially those team pledges and those hours so yeah that that and needs to be done ways to call people that have pledged on in uh, if you're gonna put the pledge yes. there then we're gonna ask yes. you to do things Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so yeah we do i mean i do go on my own uh, depending on my work uh, sometimes yeah. I go and change the number of hours. Sometimes I can do 20, 20 hours a week. Sometimes I can just do three or four. And, yeah. and I'll go change that because I wanted to reflect the reality of what yeah. I'm doing at the moment. And I think that every contributor should be able, you know, should do that if you are contributing to the project. But yeah, yeah this is a, this is an, 
what they call like an honor system that we yeah. are not following. <laughs> the honor system right. that we're not following. Right. That's what it is. I, yes, I agree. I also, uh, Hari, this might be kind of of interest to think through as well. Um, based on some of my coworkers, there have been some tickets that were submitted to track, I don't know, a decade ago and got merged. They did that work, all of the work of that contribution when they were at a different employer than where they currently are. And so attributing folks according to when they were, when the work took place could be, I find this to be true more for development than for other areas of the project. Um, but when it comes to core, especially, I would love my employer to get all the credit for something that was an old ticket, but not at the stake of the person that did that work is not currently contributing. And the work of contributing took place when they were somewhere else. Yeah. Someone with core commit, even that I'm thinking of. And so, so, so I just, I, yeah, I want to kind of like make sure our data is, is quality. I mean, sure. It helps make my employer look great, but is it really truthful? Yeah. I was just saying that Bitergia had, I mean, this is this is probably something Bitergia can help us solve because it has sorting yeah. hat. And uh in sorting hat, I believe there's a feature which allows you to show like how how long did an employee work for this organization and it yeah. demarcates on like contributions like so. Like maybe uh person X work for um uh, I don't know, like Y company for one year, then they move to Z company. So yeah, like uh, uh, opening that company's profile shows their contributions for that company so Absolutely. yeah yes again one more reason why we need dashboards yeah yeah nora yeah i will say that um that is the one thing that works relatively well when you know there's participation in doing the the credit system on mm -hmm. the drupal side is that when you uh commit comments on an issue that sort of thing uh, mm -hmm. there is an option um, for that particular thing that you're doing at that particular time um, that it's really tied to the comment you get to, mm. to say as the contributor which organization you are choosing if any to associate that contribution too so you and you don't so you don't have to you know you, you can choose yeah. not to um but um again it's a manual thing and so yeah. you know i think that either way um you know as i said i think the other day the more you can automate the better uh yeah. to some extent you know but i think that on the same hand you know i'm hearing from a lot of people that they'd like to be able to customize these stories for their specific mm -hmm. situation. So um, what I like about something like a Grimoire Lab, or, I mean, it kind of reminds me of uh, New Relic. I don't know if you've used New Relic mm -hmm. Analytics before, but the idea of having um, some of these analytics tools uh, available to managers, team um, leads, things like that, uh, to dig into themselves within their particular scope and, you know, mm. utilize the additional data, you know, that's not so public. I think that yeah. that might be valuable as well. Yeah, I agree. I think, um, I think getting into nuances about who should have access to that data and setting some clear standards of who gets access, why do they get access, how can one grow into getting that access? That's all things that I think would be really valuable for us to be very explicit about um, and open for some consideration further, so long as we adhere to having some process stated. And I do love that that in Drupal, you can choose to additionally log in. Um, I want to allow, I don't know, again, Please forgive me if I am not pronouncing your name correctly. Kisaba, I, I'm not sure how to do the CS sound in my language. Um, and Kira as well, if you've got any ideas or thoughts, but no pressure otherwise. Um, but I think that ability to manually optionally log some things could help us account for people that would like certain kinds of metrics that just cannot be automated. I want to thank everybody I, here. Oh, yeah, go ahead. 
Yeah, no, I just wanted to add that. No, I'm quite new to this. Um, so my name is Chaba, by the way. I, Chaba. Sorry, so, I was, so I like was... a ch in English sound. Yeah, exactly. Thank yes. you. So, yeah, it's Hungarian. <laughs> um, no, so when I asked, I wasn't able to reply. I That's okay. Get a participant or something. No, so I'm quite new to this, and and I was just listening and and collecting some thoughts, but not yet ready to <laughs> share, maybe. So, uh, well, I hope to talk. more about this at WordCamp Europe maybe, and then and yeah. just see what comes out of these sessions. Um, yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've definitely, I've, I'm mainly still in the processing phase too, I think. Yeah. Like uh, I've been thinking a lot about, um, I guess what, what some folks have brought out, a lot of folks have brought up already about what problems are we solving for specifically? And, and I think seeing as, as close as we can, and I know there's a lot of attention to this, so not to say that there isn't, but mm -hmm. um, finding that the, the data helps us make those, make those cases. And, and also like, I don't know. Yeah. It, essentially that, like, make sure that we're solving we're solving for for those particular problems because there are a lot of ways to interpret different data um yeah and i and thanks for for bringing up around um work that's difficult to track i definitely have been yeah. feeling that and i'm and sometimes it's hard to know what data would actually be helpful to tell those stories too I mean, mm -hmm. like thinking about how I would have uh, like tracked or put together or scored like work on the mentorship program, for instance, um, last time around, um, yeah. what value does that bring? How should how should those uh, sort of things be be sort of displayed or not? Yeah. Um, and in which ways does it show up publicly? What things get used? Should it be a set of numbers or should it be things like the sort of posts that we've been generating as a way of... Mm -hmm. As a way of that, uh, do we have weights around certain things? You know, if someone's leading a particular thing, does that does that feel different in however mm -hmm. it's presented, as opposed to um, as opposed to it being maybe publicly it ends up being a couple of blog posts, but there was a lot of work in the background, or or however it however it turned out being. Um, yeah, and we also want to continue that's a lot providing. of words, but basically, yeah, I'm just uh, I'm <laughs> yeah. trying to put it all together and 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 think about it. And thanks for thanks for running these. There's a yes. lot of information to to think about. It 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 really is, and I have a, a a great honor to be able to work with Kira internally. So we share our stakeholders of who we, we report to. Uh, we have slightly different next level stakeholders, but if you go up a couple layers, it's all the same. Uh, so. My manager gives me lots of autonomy to pick and choose. And that is also true for Kira's manager about just deciding what needs to be worked on at this time. However, if we continue going up the ranks further, um, if people want to get into nitty gritty questioning of how time gets spent, which thankfully they don't, but it could be a possibility. And how does this align with the values that are offered to customers? And I think of that, I have no qualms in saying that in the current economic climate um, and seeing that our shared employer has had some layoffs, we certainly want to have some data that is available should it ever be questioned. Um, and to think about how that, you know, we we get the autonomy um, and it is an honor to have that autonomy because that means both of us are able oh. to work on what we're passionate about doing, which is great for both us and also the community. Um, but again, continuing to have that narrative there. And I think at times too, validating. Uh, I'm super thankful that the president of our department um, met recently with a well-respected individual in the community who sp spoke very favorably of the work that we're doing. I think having the reinforcements there because this, the person they were speaking to in our, our internal connection doesn't get into the nitty gritty of contributing and understanding really what it is that we even do, uh, but reminding them continually that this is important and it matters and do more of that <laughs> is, is something that would benefit us. Yeah.
lots of thoughts that are there. I'm going to say thank you. I, I will, I have a few more moments with us, but I'm going to end record. Thank you all for who participated in any of the four hangouts that took place thus far. There'll be more conversation to come during Europe and ongoing. By all means, come on into the sustainability team. I myself have been a long time lurker on sustainability, knowing that this was on the horizon and I would pivot into that area for sure at that time. Certainly reach out with thoughts. Keep the conversations going because certainly we want to hear and consider and work together to make this as sustainable as we possibly can for the health of the project, for the health of the entire ecosystem. And let me hit stop record. And